One disease, two cures. Well, there's a really terrible disease that's been around for a while, very long while, and um, the bad thing is it's very contagious. And uh, everybody struggles with this disease at uh, some point in time in your life. You'll struggle with it. And uh, this disease can kill you if it's not treated correctly. You say, what's the disease? Well, I'll get back to that here in a minute. But uh, this one disease, there's two different cures for it. Now, the one cure has been around for a very long time. And uh, it has a track record of hundreds of years of curing people of the disease and um, it's worked there are literally uh, I don't even know probably hundreds of millions of cases of people that have been cured by the one uh, cure the other cure uh, has only come out recently and um, more modern more updated uh, research and science going into it they say um, you say, well, has it been tested? Well, a few times, and, and we've seen some positive results. But uh, I think it's a good thing to have a modern science come out and, and give us a better disease than the, or a better cure, excuse me, than the one that's been there for centuries. Um, so what do you think? You have the disease, which cure do you want? The one cure that's been around for hundreds of years works millions of times millions of cases or the new cure that just came out that hasn't really been documented yet we aren't really sure we think it should work it looks like it would work and whatever well if you have any sense obviously you're picking the one that's been around for hundreds of years say okay some of you might know what i'm talking about here maybe figure out my little analogy um but uh what am i trying to say well there's a disease out there it's called sin all sin is negative i will always preach that every sin that the bible condemns uh it's for a reason god doesn't try to take away your fun or something like that god wants you to live a full happy life um sin will stop you from living a full happy life and uh you might enjoy it for a little season just a little bit of time there you go out you party you get drunk, you fornicate, you do drugs, you do whatever, things that the Bible condemns as sin. But uh, those things will come back. Be sure your sins will find you out. You might get away with it for a little bit of time, but eventually that sin will get you. Um, so what's the cure for sin? Well, that would be the Word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. And this cure that's been out um, is the King James Bible. And that King James Bible came out in 1611. So that'd be, what, 412 years ago, I think, by my calculations, if I'm correct, being 2023 right now. 412 years of history, of lives changed, of, of amazing truth spread out there. The most published book in the history of the world is the King James Version. And uh, millions of people have had their lives changed by that King James Bible. I am one of them. And uh, so are you if you're saved. And you know the power of that King James Version. But now all of a sudden we have these people coming out. In the 20th century especially, there were over 200 new versions brought out in 100 years all claiming to update the archaic English of the King James Version and we have more accurate uh, Greek texts now and scholarship and whatever else um, why does it need to be updated 200 times in 100 years think about that it doesn't the English language does not change that rapidly and um, since when should we update the Word of God anyhow to match modern street slang and whatever else um i mean does god just say hey you know what um as times change we need to continue to update my word to keep with popular trends and political correctness and whatever else no it doesn't work that way um you don't update the word of god
but all of a sudden, oh, we have we have better manuscripts. Oh, you mean the ones that were there available to the translators of the King James Bible? At least Vaticanus was. Erasmus knew about it, um, didn't use it because he knew it was corrupt. Um, but the Sinaiticus one, Codex uh, Aleph, if you want to get into the actual title of the thing, that one, there's a lot of proof that it was actually invented in the 1800s. And Constantine von Tischendorf pretended that he had found this ancient manuscript. Um, uh, some good arguments for that. Uh, but the whole point is, oh, you know, we found two manuscripts. And they're supposedly 4th century manuscripts. So they predate a lot of the Texas Receptus manuscripts. Therefore, we found older and better manuscripts. And we need to update the King James Bible. Why? Let's just say that they were older and better manuscripts. They weren't, but let's just say that they were. Um, was the King James Bible not working? Uh, no, the King James Bible was working quite well. If you go back into the 1800s when the naturalistic textual criticism started to rear its ugly head and, and uh, all these guys started to come out and question the Word of God, rationalism and all the other things, that, and atheism and evolutionary philosophy in the 1800s, German rationalism, and all the stuff, the satanic abominations, started coming out in the 1800s. And all of a sudden, we have to question the Word of God. We have to start questioning the Bible because it's no good anymore. You see? And uh, now, oh, we, we need to have all these new versions. So it became this big trend, and the Jesuits were pushing a lot of it. And I mean, it's documented history. You have the Jesuit Cardinal Carlo Maria Martini, and he was one of the uh, guys on the board of that uh, produced the Nestle's text. The Nestle's text that a lot of men like John MacArthur and James White and some of these other devils, they promote the Nestle's text, created by a Jesuit. Well, he wasn't created by a Jesuit. It was just he was sitting on the board there. I'm sure just silently watching. <laughs> yeah. And you look at the Nestle's text, the 27th edition, it says about that it was made under the supervision of the Vatican, which I've shown in multiple videos. <laughs> But uh, that's okay. We can use it. It's, it's good and wonderful. It's a more updated, more modern cure than the old King James Bible. But uh, my point is, if the King James Bible is working, if the King James Bible is getting people saved and changing lives and forming, shaping society and, and uh, laws and rules and things, making people good, moral people, why do you need to update it? If there is a... If there was actually a real sickness out there in terms of i mean sin is a real sickness but i'm saying say the flu okay and you say what's good for the flu well been known forever you know chicken noodle soup chicken bone broth is very good for the flu good remedy have some chicken soup you know and that's still very true very good cure for the flu um, there's nutritional type of things and it's worked for you know, a long time. Um, so, why do you have to update it? Why do you have to change it? Why do you have to say, um, it's no good, you know, the old cure, we have to have a new cure. And I get, I've been getting this thing in the comments lately that, well, the King James Bible, it's just not any good because it doesn't say Yahashua and Yahawashi and whatever other kind of Hebrew words you want to come up with. And it says, it, it takes away the name of God you know, Yahweh or something. Uh, no, it says Jehovah, which is actually the correct thing there to say about God, not Yahweh. Uh, Yahweh is a, is a false name of a false God. Um, that's a whole other study. But these people, oh, you know, the King James Bible, it doesn't translate certain words correctly. It uses words from the Latin Vulgate and all the other stuff. Well, there's two Latin Vulgates. There's Jerome's Latin Vulgate and then the old Latin Vulgate. The old Latin Vulgate was pretty good. Um, but uh, Jerome's Latin Vulgate was a new version. You mean to tell me the Catholics would have come out with a new version to replace one that God was using? Uh, yeah, it was done in the past with the Latin. Jerome's Latin Vulgate was the new version back years ago in the 4th century, around 380 AD. And, uh, and I've studied it, by the way. I've read offline books, you know, not uh, little special videos conspiracy videos on YouTube or something 
and they come out and they, you know, these guys, they're going to try to sell their uh, new version. And so they have to come out, you know, the King James Bible has been honored and revered for years, <gasps> but we have a new cure. Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. And you get a bunch of gullible young people that ha don't uh, spend a whole lot of time reading paper-based books. And they watch it and they go, oh, wow. People have been wrong for hundreds of years. Oh, but we can have the restored names New Testament. Wow. Praise hallelujah. Oh, this is wonderful. You know, or the other one that people do is they'll say, well, the King James Bible was actually... You know, King James, I saw one here recently, a comment. King James was baptized as a Roman Catholic as a baby. It proves that the, the King James Bible is a Catholic translation. Oh, wow. With logic like that, you know, I'll tell you what. Um, no. If King James was baptized as a by Roman Catholicism or something, as a Roman Catholic, uh, he didn't have any say in the matter. Okay, that doesn't make him a Catholic. King James passed a law that no future king or queen could be a Roman Catholic. King James was not pro-Catholic. Okay. Uh, the gunpowder plot with Guy Fawkes. They tried to kill King James and the members of Parliament. Uh, I don't think King James was in the back pocket of the Vatican. And the uh, King James translators in the, the foreword, they wrote about that this will make, you know, basically well, this translation is going to make problems for popish persons. Uh, and they called the Pope the man of sin. Uh, so, uh, no, the King James Bible is not a Catholic translation. It never has been a Catholic translation. And so, well, I saw on a website that they, some Catholic system, they, they recommended the King James Bible. Yeah, part of mind control. Part of coming out and saying, oh, because Bible believers, like me, have come out and said the Catholic Church has never recommended it. Well, then we'll just kind of recommend it on a website. And therefore, then we can dispel that and then ruin people's faith in the Word of God. Um, the Catholic Church does not want you to be armed, brethren. Uh, they don't want you to have that sword of the Spirit. They want you to have a a uh, little lightsaber, <laughs> like my video I did years ago, sword of the Spirit versus the lightsaber of the apostate, apostates, I think I called it. And uh, I don't even know if it's still on YouTube or not. Probably not. But, um, you know, all the... The new versions, they're, they're new, they're improved, they're so much better. Or, you know, the, the King James Bible, it, it was corrupt, and the Geneva Bible's better, and the Tyndale's translation is better, and, and things. I had one like that, too. William Tyndale's, you know, he, his was the true translation. And I said, uh, actually, you know, it's 95% similar to the King James Bible. Um, Tyndale was not opposed to what the King James translators would have done in the future. Actually, Tyndale's dying words were, Lord, open the King of England's eyes. Uh, that happened with King James. And, um, I have to kill the occasional mosquito. That's why you see me on like this and things. If you haven't seen some of my other videos, get a lot of mosquitoes here in Northern Maine. But, uh, you know, um, William Tyndale's work, uh, was started and he did a good job um, certainly but he didn't get the whole Bible translated before he was executed um, and God is not going to allow one man to make a translation of his word God used 54 brilliant scholars in from 1604 to 1611 there was I think it went down to 47 till the whole process was done but uh, I mean the Lancelot Andrews and I mean some of these other guys you read about brilliant men absolutely brilliant and uh you know oh but they're they were wicked and evil and francis bacon actually wrote the king james bible and all this nonsense all this stupid nonsense and what are you left with okay it's all true the whole thing was a conspiracy the king james bible is a it's a corrupt bible okay what are you left with oh well, that's right a new cure well that's right something that hasn't been proven you see you see how this whole thing works? Do you see how the devil can come in and wreck your faith in the Word of God? And he'll do it through new versions that come from the Vatican. He'll do it from, oh, you should go back to the Tyndale or the or uh, Wycliffe, perhaps, or something, back in the 1300s. Um, no, you should stick with the King James Bible. I've tested it. I've proved it for years. The purest doctrine comes from the King James Bible. 
I remember a brother in Christ, we were talking about this the one time, and he read that there was some new version using, promoting a professor at some seminary. And the guy literally said, well, there's my son back there. I was thinking, what is that? I saw it in the camera. And this professor literally said, pure doctrine can only come from the King James Bible. And he was not a fan of the King James Bible, but he knew enough to say that the purest doctrine out there comes from, out of a King James Version. Okay, so um, you can do what you want. Okay, you have liberty of conscience, freedom of conscience, free will up here. You can do whatever you want. But I'm going to use the King James Bible, and none of you are going to wreck my faith in it, and you are not going to be on in the comments section trying to wreck other people. Okay, that's not acceptable. It's uh, sowing discord among the brethren is an abomination. It's a sin, a great and terrible sin. So, I'm being hunted back here, I think. There's a guy behind me there coming. <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, your disease of sin, my disease of sin, I know what the cure is. The cure is a King James Bible that's been proven for over 400 years, 412 years. Um, I'm going to take that cure. Uh, you do what you want. Use your new version. Use your Yahawashi, whatever, you know, version that gets the names correct. Even though the New Testament was written in Greek, but we won't get into that. You know, I mean, get it, get an education, you know. Uh, oh, no, the, the, it's been hidden at the Hebrew words. and what? No, it was written in Greek. All right. Uh, and Jehovah is the correct word, not Yahweh. Okay, that's nonsense. It's a bunch of people trying to get you back under the law, uh, which is condemned in the book of Galatians. So then you have to go in and condemn the book of Galatians because Paul wrote it, not Jesus or something. <laughs> uh, yeah, go fly a kite, man. Go take a long walk off of a short pier, or whatever else you want to say. Um, don't have time for a bunch of stupid heretics. But, uh, yeah, because I've done the study and I've done the research, and that's why I say stupid heretics, because I see a lot of these people, they haven't done the research, they haven't done the work. They'll watch an hour or two of video on YouTube, and now they're an expert. And they know all the conspiracy and all the angles to it. And, oh, we have to reject the King James Bible. Please. So, don't let anybody wreck your faith in the King James Bible. And um, if you're some young person, by the way, and you think that you can get all that there is figured out about Christianity within, you know, an hour or two, you get this uh, thing of this download dump into your mind, and, and now I'm an expert Christian and, and things. It doesn't work that way, okay? Um, you have to study for years and... Um, accept your place as a babe in Christ, the Bible says, and uh, accept the fact that you don't know the Bible that well, and it's going to take you a long time, and that you need to be submissive to older Christians, to elders in the church that know the Bible and that have studied the Bible. I'm not just some YouTube dude that showed up and, you know, I have a webcam or pulled my camera up walking through the woods or something. No, I've been in ministry since 2007, and I studied for 10 years before that. So, um, I've preached in pulpits. I've preached on the street. I've, you know, gone out door to door. I've, you know, had hands laid on me and they prayed over me and things. Um, I've gone through all the different qualifications. Well, you say you don't have seminary. Yeah, because seminaries aren't, seminaries aren't in the Bible. But all the biblical things that I'm supposed to do, I've done in the past. I've had older men basically ordain me. So, um... You know, mind your manners, okay? Think about some things. Uh, you need to understand that this modern cursed generation where you just know everything and that you should, you're just up on older people's level just like this because you've, you know, watched, you've binged watched videos for a week straight or something. No, it takes a long time. And just simply come in humility and say, I don't understand this issue. Do you have some other videos that I can watch that I can be better educated on this and, and things? Um, I mean, if you have any ministry that does not hold the King James Bible up as their final authority and respect the King James Bible, 
don't watch them. It's just that simple. They have no standard. They have fallen for the satanic lie of ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. Um, don't waste your time on them. So, um, you know, uh, it's not my advice. I'm telling you what the truth is. And you can accept the truth or reject the truth. But you reject the truth, you're going to end up in hell. Well, no, I prayed a prayer. I've, I've believed. I've done whatever. It doesn't matter. A lot of people profess to be Christians, and they're not. Um, the Holy Spirit has to be there. So that is going to be it for this video. Um, thank you very much for watching. Are you protecting me here? Uh-oh. Whoa. Oh, brother. Toy gun there. Um, so <laughs> that's going to be it. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.